What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Writer's Realm Podcast, and thanks for joining us on the epic adventure we call writing. We're your hosts, Bob Adato, Holly Robilliard, and Austin Matthews. And today we're going to talk about queering with Michelle Lorraine. Here's our guest, Michelle Lorraine. How are you? Good. Thanks for, so much for having me. Yeah. Um, hey, so what, what's Michelle Lorraine all about? What do you, you got, writing any books or published or what do you got? Yes, yeah, so I'm in the middle of the querying process. Um, I wrote my book during COVID. Uh, it was actually funny. I, I worked in TV for 14 years, and a friend of mine, uh, it was many people in TV who meet writers and different people in different departments. And one of my friends, she's a TV writer, and I was complaining to her. I was like, hey, I, I, I really kind of want like an action adventure, kind of like Indiana Jones type book. And I was like, I can't keep not finding anything. And she joked that we were having breakfast. She's like, oh, you should write one. And I'm like, yeah, 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 when I have time. And this was before COVID. And then obviously COVID happened. And, you know, suddenly we all had some time. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wow. That's now, I mean, we have to do our first uh, kind of rabbit hole question about TV. I did not realize that. Uh, so you worked in the TV industry. Yeah, so for 14 years, I worked primarily in post-production, which is kind of with the editors and doing sound and VFX and things like that. Oh my um, and I worked a little bit in production as well. Um, the ones that people usually like know the names of are like Riverdale or Batwoman or um, Marvel's Agent Carter, oh. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, um, and then some ones that like people were less mistresses unless you were mm -hmm. watching like ABC in the middle of summer. Um, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. I ended up watching all of Riverdale with my wife, one. so... Wait, well, that's more than I watched. Right. I watched up until <laughs> season three when I I wasn't uh, there at a, I Well, actually, I watched the first episode of season four because it was the episode I mean, that Luke Perry uh, they attributed to mm, Luke Perry after he mm -hmm. passed. But after season four, episode one, I was. I mean, yeah, it definitely went off the rails <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first the two seasons, I would say, are much more my taste. Season three, it's starting to get a little wonky. Yeah, then you're like, wait, am I watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch or Riverdale? I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they almost always turn into young adult uh, just angst and uh, drama. Because I was, I love The Flash. That's my favorite character. Uh, combo hero so they came out with the flash and the flash was awesome and all of a sudden by season two and a half it was just like everyone's in love with each other and everyone's fighting for each other i was like goodness gracious yeah, well you just run out of things to do so you yeah gotta no more bad guys so let's just you know I have, another uh, evil flash yeah i've heard a couple of a few authors um that do like the new adult fantasy um that have supposedly been in the works or in the talks um with producers about turning their novels into TV shows. And that for me, I think is so exciting because we don't really have any adult fantasy shows out there right now. And so I think that would just be absolutely amazing, right? Because all these, all the people that loved like the young adult series and the young adult shows years back were, you know, adults now. Mm -hmm. um, and so it would be great for us to have something else to watch. I think that would just be. Yeah. Me nerding out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're making me think of like like a show like Supernatural. When they have like 15 mm. seasons, the people yeah. that started watching that maybe when they were 18, by the end, time they ended, it was they were 30 something. Yeah. So yeah. I think Absolutely. there definitely is that audience for that kind of stuff that yeah. like is not quite being, unless you like go towards like a True Blood type of thing, which sometimes mm. is like a little bit too far for some people. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, sure. so there is like kind of like that niche that's not being mm -hmm. quite fulfilled yeah. i don't think yeah, yeah it's like paranormal but not paranormal romance yeah yeah <laughs> well michelle so tell I guess us even about supernatural your... gets oh. super hard in that yeah so <laughs> <laughs> michelle tell us about your book that you wrote what's it about action yeah, adventure it like... sounds like yeah action adventure though it's it's funny if you look at my social media i say historical thriller a lot and that's because i kind of like attribute it to kind of like da vinci code and that's what they were listed under mm. but every time i go querying which is to remind everybody what querying is it's basically like sending out your a pitch for your novel to an agent so that you can get a deal. Um, basically, I always kind of akin it to like an actor needs an agent to get a movie role. Like you need your mm -hmm. literary agent to help you get your book deal. Um, and uh, and every time I have to submit, there is no like historical thriller genre. So I always have to be like, action adventure it is. That's but then you go on like social media and like action adventure, like nobody's got an action adventure hardly mm -hmm. on there. So it's 
from a marketing standpoint, it's very hard to say yes. what genre I am. But uh, but yeah, action adventure is what I'm starting to to lean towards, just because I that's what I keep running against mm -hmm. as far mm -hmm. as a genre. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a female Indiana Jones. I wanted to kind of create like a modern version with a female, um, so kind of like Tomb Raider esque as well. Um, mm. Even that show, Librarians. If you watched that, I know there was like the the movie series, and then there was the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, so very like found family group of people who go and reclaim stolen art and artifacts from foreign countries that have taken them and returned them. Mm -hmm. um, but my first one that I, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, so it's like a very reverse Indiana Jones and, you know, returning yeah. things. I like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how well you guys are versed in like the, the art and artifacts world, but there's stuff like the Rosetta Stone that Egypt mm -hmm. has asked for back like, several times. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, better luck next time. Right. Yeah. Um, and obviously some places are better than England about that. Like I know mm -hmm. um, the U.S. in particular has like been trying to be like more mm -hmm. proactive about a returning stuff. I actually met a uh, museum cur curator that they had a mummy at their museum mm -hmm. and they like just wanted to give it back. And Egypt was like, no, you got to go through all the paperwork. So like for years they've been going through the paperwork oh, of wow. trying to return this. And they just were like, we want to do the right thing and give it <laughs> <Right>. back <laughs> but, <laughs> because there's all this red tape. <laughs> it takes forever. So oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, it's it. kind of like a weird yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. Not to get off on a huge tangent, but the history of like what Western civilization did with mummies, mind boggling. Like <laughs> it, using it as like ground up mummies as medicine. Oh. It's a weird rabbit hole of you yeah, know, history whole, to go like, down. Egyptology when it was like real hot and like, I want to mm -hmm. say like 1920s when they were like discovering a lot of these tombs. Like it's mm -hmm. real. I remember, I think it was in vienna and they had like a um oh god i forget what they're called like they're the the really tall um obelisk? stone obelisk yeah they had one and they're like yeah but it means nothing and i was like what do you mean it means nothing and they're like yeah there's just a bunch of hieroglyphics they put on there because they didn't know how to read hieroglyphics then so they just threw up a bunch of symbols that had <laughs> somewhere else so they're like it means wow. absolute nonsense it's like nonsense. if you just like you know threw up a bunch of letters from the a alphabet on there right. but like it's a thing was... now it looks like it right yeah so you know it's like a random tattoo in the 90s of like chinese characters <laughs> exactly exactly yeah so yeah. Um, okay well uh so you said female-led who's your main character or is it characters you have two or one or uh the main character you follow her name is alex and i did that after the library of alexandria but i also because mm -hmm. i wanted a, a name that wasn't super feminine that was like a little mm -hmm. bit more um because she takes on definitely a little more of a masculine role um but her best friend is a, a guy who is a um he forges art um they have we have another one she's a female she's a mechanic we have another guy he's like the tech guy Nice. So very much like kind of like I said, the like Indiana Jones archetypal, right. like you know, here's mm -hmm. the one that fixes things, and here's yeah. the one that's LeBron, and you know, yeah. um, so uh, got your whole yeah, heist you crew. Hi exactly, it yeah, is, you yeah. get your little heist crew, yeah. It sounds definitely sounds like a heist. So is it a single book, or are you planning a series, or? So I was kind of wanting to do it kind of like the James Bond where like you get like a similar cast of characters, but you get like a new mission. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So the next one will have similar characters in it like most of the characters obviously there's people who are probably not gonna make it in the first one <laughs> um uh, but then the next one they go on like a different one um this first one is it's about a mayan codex um and the next one i'm working on is basically about um a artifact that the, J the japanese took during imperialism from south korea so wow and this is uh modern day set in modern day yes yes okay. and uh the only thing i try not to do though is like make it too obviously like i don't like say like you know something about kim kardashian or anything like right, that because yeah. i don't hmm. yes it's one of the things i really loved about older books in some degree is they like you, you like harry potter like you don't really know what year right. It is right yeah, you know, you know it's pre cell phone though, because the whole wizarding world would have blown up if cell phones existed. Because <laughs> all it takes is fair. one kid putting a you know Instagram thing yeah. of them doing a spell That's and boom, fair. over. That's <laughs> fair, but yeah, I like stuff like that that like you're not too reminded of. Like oh, like if it was like some mm -hmm. joke about I don't know Kanye West doing something, mm -hmm. you'd be like right. oh that dates it to like 2004, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I try to stay away from from yeah. that kind of stuff. So. All right. Fair enough. All right. Well, perfect. All right. So let's get into querying. Um, you said you've been uh, querying or 
let's just start from the beginning. Like you already explained what it is. It's doing a pitch. Now doing a pitch is not easy. I think all of us can agree, right? <laughs> I've heard like the elevator pitch. Um, you know, you have like, you want to work for a penguin, you know, and you just happen to be at a convention and there's the head, whoever acquisitions. All right. Tell me about your book. And you're just like, oh my gosh, deer in the headlights. So querying is pretty much the same thing where you have to just come up with like a blurb or what, what does that look like? Yeah, so you do different items. So one thing you create is a query letter, which is kind of like the cover letter for your resume. And it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be under, it's either 400 or 450 uh, words. Um, and usually it's like a paragraph, like about like your genre, your word count. Um, and then like, you know, like if the agent's like, I like heists and I like thrillers and I like history, you usually be like, based on your interest in heist history and, um, thrillers, I think this would fit your list. And then it's usually like two paragraphs of your kind of like the blurb you'd find on the back of the book of like, of your story. And then the last paragraph is usually like, if you have any prior publications, um, uh, any of like your kind of background or, you know, say maybe you're, you're writing a, a book, a, you know, mm -hmm. biography of, you know, whoever, if you have a degree in that thing, mention that. So mm -hmm. kind of yeah. a little bit of a blurb and a little bit about you, I guess. Okay. Yeah. You're selling your book and then you're selling yourself too, I guess. Right. Yeah. You kind of got to write a little bit of like, why do you think you're qualified to write this book? <laughs> <laughs> um, which is always like a tough question unless you're like Malala where it's like well you're Malala so <laughs> like <laughs> you know like obviously she's super qualified to write about her experience because right. she is that person um, mm -hmm. but yeah you have to sell yourself a little bit um, uh, which I always find like really difficult to be like hey why am I qualified <laughs> to do this <laughs> um yeah. Uh, especially as like I'm writing about like things that are like about other places and about other countries and I have characters who are multicultural and, hmm. and obviously I, I did beta readers and did a lot of research and things like that and did the best I could you know to represent people that are not don't look like me and everybody who's listening I am very much a white girl mm -hmm. um, so I'm not people of all these places so mm -hmm. um, yeah it's always a little bit of like why do you feel like you're qualified <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> which is always an intimidating question um mm. But yeah, on top of the query letter, you usually have to do a synopsis, which I think is like usually like 900 words or less. And the synopsis is like the whole book mm. um, written down versus the query letters, like, like I said, the blurb on the back of the book kind of right. you have to think yeah. of it as so it's not giving away the ending. Right. Um, and then like sometimes they'll ask you random questions like I've had like, what's a song that you think like emulates your book or what's some huh. keywords or what's your audience? Um, or similar titles or stuff like that. So you kind of have mm -hmm. to be ready to be like, mm -hmm. to your point, like elevator pitch, like, okay, well, if they mm -hmm. ask me what song, I have to know a song that <laughs> gives the right vibe. Something hip and happening. So, Something that yeah. they've heard of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, that being said, like, those are things that are helpful while you're writing. It's like, oh, if you have like, you know, a good soundtrack that you're like, oh, yeah, this kind of like explains this character, then you can just have it on in the background while you're writing or like, having comparison titles it's like okay well like what is a, like a way to set the mood in a similar way so like it's helpful to be doing those things anyways so like i can see why they would ask because it's like if you haven't thought about that then like yeah it makes sense that they would really be poking holes at you yeah and i feel like the only thing like with comparison titles and i know it's like definitely a thing that the industry i've seen so many books where they're like it's x meets y and mm -hmm. i've seen people there was a, a girl really famously on tiktok she wrote her book as like it was like gilmore girls meets practical magic and she wound up selling a bunch of books she did really well and i think like she did her marketing really well mm. um because she wound up getting she was like rejected for like 10 years and then finally like took off a of tiktok yeah. the only downside i see of that is I, I haven't read her book yet but i saw some people were like what your idea of gilmore girls and my idea of gilmore girls yeah. might be different you might have taken it away oh it's a mother daughter relationship yeah her version was like, oh, well, it's set in a small town with this, like, cast of characters. Mm. Mm. But somebody might be going in for the mother-daughter relationship that's right. not there. So that's the only thing mm. I, I'm always scared about, like, giving people of, like, comp titles. Of, like, mm. you don't know what they related to in that comp title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm usually I feel like, like... Go ahead. 
Yeah, I would say I feel like as like with agents as well. I mean, how many people do you get from the industry being like, oh, it's this book meets this book, and people pick the two most popular books at the time, and so it's like how many, you know, query letters are they getting with this exact same comparison, uh, right? Yeah, but yeah, if you do fair. something off the walls, like it's you know, Lord of the Rings plus Doctor Who, like, okay, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, there was one that I think I saw. It was like supposed to be like the Song of Achilles meets Mulan or something, and I was just like, okay, I know what both of those things are. I would not have mixed those together, but mm -hmm. but yeah, it's always like that's the always fear I have with comp titles. Like, mm -hmm. so I always try to go like you know the historical intrigue of Da Vinci Code meets the you know mm -hmm. like camaraderie and found family of like Six of Crows. So at least mm -hmm. like. I'm pointing out what right. I want yeah, you to good. remember from mm -hmm. this. <laughs> that's a good point. That's that's good. That's a really so, good point. Yeah. Well, querying. Um, I know I've done some querying. Uh, for my first book, my editor told me you need to query this because it's really well uh, written. And uh, and I was like, it's steampunk. The, Ten years ago, I would have been in, but now is dead. Uh, so I just said, fine. I'll I'll you know, honestly, I only did six of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried. I mean, I, you know, and of course it was all a nose. Now, one thing I did realize, there is a lot of research we have to do for querying. Mm -hmm. um, you just can't throw it out like, well, here you go. I mean, we have to find, well, first, right now we have to go through agents, correct, Michelle? Yeah. So, I mean, I have a couple people. There's one guy who's actually one of my beta readers and he's pretty popular on TikTok and he got reached out to by a publication and he went around the whole agent thing mm. um but okay. i don't think that's the like traditional right. as much as you can be traditional mm -hmm. path right. yeah. um the path i've been going down so that was like what you did was reach out basically to agents and and hope they like you yeah um <laughs> yeah so, send coupons but... or whatever but um <laughs> but we have to like I mean, there's, you know, and I'll add the links later. And Michelle, if you have any links, you can share them while we're talking about all this. But you're going to have to go find, like, whatever genre you're doing, YA romance. You're going to have to go look for YA romance agents. You know, um, I was looking for kind of along the lines, there's no steampunk agents out there at all. <laughs> but there was, a, like, action adventure or historical mm -hmm. fiction, you know, so I was kind of you know, go in that direction. And then with each agent or agency house, uh, or however you want to put it, um, there's like a different, like a very distinct set of like, not rules, but like, I mean, they kind of are rules. Like the, this is exactly like what the we guidelines. want to see. The guidelines. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what we want to see. And reading about others' experiences, they, they were saying, well, even um, actual agents would say, you know what, we get like a thousand queries a week. So if if we already know what our guidelines are, if there's something missing or added, we just, we don't even look at it. We just toss it aside and keep moving because they're, they want to look for like what they want to look for, right? Is that mm -hmm. your kind of experience, Michelle, or anybody else? Oh yeah, I have like, I think I got a query rejected in like under 10 minutes once and I was like, oh, no. I'm gonna read this. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. But it is like, it is difficult. I mean, I've used query tracker, which really like they list the agents and they list like genres that are interested in their stats of like how often they get back to people and stuff like that. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you got to just go like the fish in there and be like, okay, whatever your genre is, look for people in that. Um, and then like each agency will have a website and sometimes they'll list like, hey, I really like these books or I'm interested in these genres mm -hmm. or tropes or whatever um or you know they really loved this movie or that what tv show or whatever there's also manuscript wish list which um mm -hmm. agents will go on, like hashtag i think it's i always say the wrong letters manuscript wish list so it's like m s w l i think um, whatever the, the letters are yeah. that I'm really <laughs> terrible at the order of those letters. Um, but, um, but you can basically like go on, they have a website, but you can also just go on Twitter and use that hashtag. Mm -hmm. And, um, and like a lot of agents will be like, Hey, looking for some pirate romance with that involves a Kraken and <laughs> I don't know, like a female lead. And you'll like, sometimes you'll be like, well, I have a pirate thing that's got a female. It doesn't have a Kraken, but maybe they still want me, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Or you're like, I'll get one of those done in four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and this is—I've had people be like, "Does that really work?" And I was like, "I have no idea. I haven't tried." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> now you said manuscript wish list, and then what was the other one you said before? Query tracker. So query tracker. It, yeah, it it can help you track your queries. So like if you submit to somebody, um, and it will tell you, you know, you haven't heard from them in forty five days or whatever. So it gives mm. you that, but it also gives you data. So based on the information in there, it'll be like, hey, thirty percent of the time they get back to people, um, you know, and mm -hmm. you know. 10% of the time they accept the submissions, like whatever like statistics are, how many mm -hmm. days, because sometimes you'll go and you're like, oh, this person hasn't responded to anybody in two years. And you're like, mm -hmm. you might really yeah. want them, but then you kind of like have a reasonable expectation of like, you're probably not going to hear from this person. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then some of them, it's like, oh, they respond 56% of the time. And you're like, okay, well, maybe they'll hear from them, you know? Mm hmm so it kind of gives you at least a little bit of reasonable exp expectation. A lot of writers go in there, will write comments and be like, hey, we did, you know, okay. 172 days, never heard, just mm. so everybody knows. Yeah. Well, I I, sure. I know sure. some agents like it, and I'm sure some of them are like, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we keep track. <laughs> I, yeah. It's probably really nice as well, I think, you know. That you're not just sending your stuff out there and maybe you're sending, you know, if you send 10 things out or send 10 query letters out and then you don't hear back from 10 of them, at least with something like that, you can look back and be like, oh my gosh, you know, half of them aren't in the business anymore. And then the other five take, you know, like you said, two years to get back to someone. So you don't feel like, you know, oh, my book just is just garbage. Um, at least you can do your research and look and see like what that response time is supposed to be like for them. Hmm. Yeah, 100%. I mean, there was one lady who was like posting that she like loved a lot of things that, like in my book and I like it's been months and then but yeah, then I go on there and everybody's like, yeah, I haven't heard from her and I queried back in January of like uh, last year and you're like, okay, well, it's not uh, just me that's waiting. Yeah, you know, um, there's like actually one lady who actually requested more of my pages <laughs> back in November and it's been three months now. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And like, but I can go in and see there that like me and the 40 other people she asked for more pages from, she's only responded to three of the 40 people. Mm. Right. So at least I'm not waiting alone, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like that small <laughs> bit of like, well, it's not mm -hmm. that she just is ignoring me. Right. Like she's right. got other people too. So, she's ignoring 37 you know. other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one of 37, you know, um, so that is kind of like the nice thing is you, you kind of feel a little bit of like, okay, yeah, maybe it's not that I suck. It's just that this is a waiting game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say that's something that's nice about like being, you know, a writer today is that like, there's so much more community. There's so much ways, so many ways to be like connected with other people that are going through the process where it's like, I feel like if you're going through this like 40 years ago, it's like, you know, you just feel like, oh man, they're ignoring me. What am I going to do? Like. I, I can't imagine having to go through that all alone, but like, mm. you know, with the internet and everything, it's so easy to get connected with other writers who are right in the thick of it too. Yeah. yeah and I mean, like I actually like figured out like the reason for full and partials the other day. Cause like that agent requested partial. And like, I was like, why did, why even do that anymore? Like, this is like the internet. It's not going to, you know, like, why not just ask for the whole thing? And if you stop reading at page 42, you stop reading on page 42. And then somebody's yeah. like, oh, that's from the, the, when they used to mail it because it's more expensive to mail <laughs> mm -hmm. 350 pages than it is 50 pages. And I was like, right. oh, this is just a holdover from the back in the day. <laughs> like, oh, I was like, cause it, like, I was like, yeah, why don't you just stop reading if you don't like it past 45, right. you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's the gosh. internet. You could just stop. Like it's not like. <laughs> Uh, cloud space so, is expensive <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah you know, like, uh, but um but yeah it is always like a, a waiting game and mm -hmm. you know, like i said even i i got a request which is like you know kind of rare these days and i'm still waiting three months in to see if she liked those 50 extra pages so yeah. <laughs> that's neat though that's that's exciting i'm really excited for you thank um, you thank you i'm i'm hoping to hear from her soon yeah. so me and those 36 other people <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. Have you have you noticed um, if there's a certain platform that um, people prefer the query letters to come in, like whether it's like a PDF or a Word doc or a certain like certain format or something like that, or is it just kind of each different agent has a different preference? Yeah. So it de definitely depends on the agent or their agency. Cause I've definitely seen it where it's like a form on their website. I've also seen it as like a query tracker form where it's basically just like filling these blanks. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely seen where they just like list an email and you just email it in. 
but it, I mean, like it's so much varies. I mean, I've seen people where they're like, oh, submit the first 50 pages of your book. And I've also seen the first five pages of the book. And it's like, that's such a, you know, if somebody's <laughs> yeah. going to read 50 pages, they might feel very different about my book than the first yeah. five pages where, you know, maybe they don't like my main character, but they like the best friend, but the best friend doesn't get in, introduced until page 32. Like, you know, yeah. like, so it, it's, it's always difficult to, but yeah, it, it is all just dependent on the agent or the agency. Um, yeah. The ones that I always like do not like is the form on the website because it will just say thank you. And then like, uh -huh. sometimes you yeah. don't get like a confirmation. <laughs> like did it go into spam? Does it live anywhere? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, at least mm -hmm. query tracker. I know like the website's tracking it. So I assume it gets delivered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, that's assumption, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. you said post, you said, uh, you mentioned somewhere in there that, uh, you saw others posting about, um, where they're at in, in line, as it were, where, where mm. were you talking about? Was that, uh, do you say it was on Twitter or is this somewhere else? Query tracker, I'm, I think. On query tracker. Oh, yeah. On query so tracker. I can, okay. So I it's can't an actual see, website. Yeah. I can't okay. see anybody's name. So like those 36 other people. Right. I can go in and click and say who's submitted pages after their query, like mm -hmm. like me, who I submitted an additional 50 pages because she asked for it. Mm -hmm. I can see myself, but then I can also see like 39 other like anonymous ones. Mm -hmm. All I can really see is their genre and like word count and see like they submitted on, I don't know, the 1st of November. So mm -hmm. I just know those people exist. I don't know who they are, but like, like I said, it like at least makes you go like, well, she replied to three out of these 40. So the <laughs> other 37 are waiting, but there is also a, a comment section. So if you yeah. go to a particular agent and like, like, if, like I said, there was one on like manuscript wish list that was kept posting stuff that I was yeah. like, I've got what she wants. And she just responded to my thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she literally posted the other day. She's like, I'm looking for platonic male, female relationships that never get romantic. And I was like, I've got one for you. Um, go. And I like queried it like three months, three or four months ago. And I like still haven't heard. And like, you go in there <laughs> and it's like, everybody in there is like, been waiting, been waiting, <laughs> mm -hmm. been waiting. Um, I did get a little gutsy the other day and like tweet at her and be like, "Hey, um, Ooh. I queried you a couple of months ago, and I have this." Yeah. Um, and she did say she'd go looking for it. Okay. okay, I haven't heard yet, but I'm I'm hoping me being a little bit of a pain in the ass. Is yeah. 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 Know. yeah, I will say I used yeah. to do fundraising, and like that was kind of the the go to model was go for no, and so like. I would call people three times a week and leave a voicemail every second time that I called. So, you know, they were getting four or five voicemails from me every, every month. And then you'd get a hold of someone after like six months and they're like, Oh yeah, I think I got a voicemail from you. I'm like, yeah, you got a lot of them. <laughs> it's always just hard getting attention as it is. Like I, I, I don't, it's such a saturated market right now, which is like so sad because I'm sure there's so many amazing work right now, but it's like such a small like pocket of opportunity, you know, and, right. mm -hmm. and it is hard. I mean, that's why I've been like trying so much on social media, like hoping that like an agent is like, oh, yeah, I saw your, you know, post mm -hmm. and I thought it was cool or something at the very mm -hmm. least. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. You know, uh, I got a tangent question. So we're talking about querying. Now, querying involves, you know, uh, getting published by a big house. So, or, I don't know, medium house. I don't know. But um, some of us are, are indie published. So what prompted you to go with um, traditionally published? Just because I, I was told that if you indie publish, it's kind of hard to go the other way. Um, so I wanted to try traditional publishing first and then if it didn't work out to, then I would do it. Right. Um, yeah. just cause I mean, I've heard of people doing it before. There was a girl actually, like I followed on Instagram for a little bit that she published and then two years later, they, like she added a bunch of chapters and like traditionally published her the same book, uh -huh. but that's not normal. Like right. that's mm -hmm. kind of like the exception mm -hmm. to the rule. So that's why I wanted to try traditional yeah. and like if they told me no, yeah. Then I'll be like, well, at least I tried. I can go on. I mean, I've always told people mm -hmm. I was like the worst case. Like, I remember like MSN groups. Like, I was like, I'll go li have it live on Wattpad at the end of the day if that's where it just lives. <laughs> yeah. But like, I was like, I got to give myself the the choice, the chance first. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Um, so okay. yeah, there was never anything against independent publishing or anything like that. It was just, like I said, right. I was told that the trajectory doesn't go both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. No. Um, let's see. Uh, we've kind what of talked you... about, Oh, there, Holly's got to go. I have a question. You. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm full of questions today. Apparently. Good. Good. <laughs> um, what did you find was the most difficult part of this process thus far? Probably when I see somebody post like, hey, I'm looking for this and it'll be yeah. like I said, mine's kind of like Indiana Jones. If they're like, I love Indiana Jones. I love this, that and the other thing. And I'm like, OK, cool. I'm like, and you're never going to be an exact match to whatever they're posting they want. Like, obviously, that's that's not going to happen. But if I go, you know, I, I hit three out of six things they listed and I, que I query and then you hear no. And queries now, it's it's much like getting rejected for a job. They just give you like the standard no thank you. So it's never mm -hmm. like oh, I didn't like it because X, Y, Z. And then you're like, okay, well, that's why. They don't give you any reasons. So sometimes you mm -hmm. can be like, oh, I thought I was perfect. Yeah. Um, now you're telling me I'm not. Um, but why? And you don't know <laughs> why, unfortunately. Yeah. It's like I almost, part. I almost wonder if that's a good thing as well, because as much as we always want feedback on our writing, I almost feel like when you get to the point where you're querying something out, if you were getting you know, if you had one agent come back and say, you know, I didn't like X, Y, and Z, and then you went back and changed it and then presented it to somebody else. Well, that next person might've actually preferred it the way it was before. And now you've changed it. Right. I mean, I guess if you're getting X, Y, Z back from multiple people, mm -hmm. then, you know, for sure. But again, like it, it's, I guess it's kind of like, do you really want to change it? Because then, you know, you might've changed the thing that another agent would have loved. So I, I almost wonder if that's part of it for them or if it's, you know, just scarce resources and they just don't have the time. But yeah, well, yeah, I imagine fair in that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I imagine like you said, you got one rejection in like 10 minutes. Like I imagine it's a lot like job applications now where they do have like pre-screening, like AI going through reading it and being like, hey, does this fit like certain guidelines or like expectations? And then probably sending out automated rejections as well. Like it's you know unfortunately it's going into every part of the industry in every industry mm -hmm. yeah and i'm told like back in the like even a couple years ago that they used to give some kind of feedback there was actually even uh one of the the authors who follows me um i believe her name's amy doke i might be a little wrong about that but her story her book is called eleanor jones um it's the name of the character um i'm alluding the whole title but she sent me an agent she was like oh i got really good feedback on her she might like your book da -da. and i sent and i got rejected and i got no feedback and it's like within even a couple of years like this person stopped giving feedback and i think that's just like an industry-wide thing now is that like <laughs> they don't give feedback which to your point is like may be good because I might change something that somebody else might like. Mm -hmm. But it's also, I feel like, like, like even when I did beta readers, like I had 20 plus beta readers, if six people told me they didn't like X, I would kind of go look at it, you know, I'm like, why yeah. didn't, mm -hmm. but if one person out of 20 tells me they didn't like this, right. I'm probably going to weigh that less than, you know, right. what the six people said. So mm -hmm. I kind of see both of it. Um, right. But yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's hard. I, I get it too. I sent in a short story um, and I don't usually write short stories, but I just did this one for fun. And I saw on Instagram through a friend that um, this, this small publisher was looking for just short stories for this. They were still calling for submissions. Um, and so I submitted it and I had seen afterwards, they were like, oh, we've got like pages upon pages of notes on every story. And we all sit down and we talk between our whole group about every story. Um, and then mine got rejected. And I'm like, but you have all these notes. Can I see those? <laughs> <laughs> Where are they? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like really funny because you know they they are going through and making these detailed notes, but it's like share them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always yeah, yeah. And some because I had my query and like my first chapter reviewed by a place called Ghost Scribbler, I believe it was called. They do like an author group one, uh, author like uh, subscription box like once a month where they'll give you a book and some stuff. And like, they'd give me notes and actually like, it was amazing because I was actually listening to your guys' podcast and, and one of you, which forgive me, but I'm going to forget who said that like their first chapter, like they chucked a good part of it. That's what I wound up doing after I got these mm -hmm. notes of the first chapter. And I was like, thank God, because these people that only asked for five pages, I would have been screwed. <laughs> um, um, and mine was just that like I had written 
from a, like not my main character's perspective at first mm. and everybody was kind of like well like it'd be better if you start here and I was like oh my god you're so right afterwards mm -hmm. but yeah that's the kind of stuff that you're like well I wish somebody would tell me because that'd be yeah. an easy thing to fix that people in that first five pages if you only read five pages like I said I would have been like sol <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah so, so not even first five pages but how much pressure did you put on yourself over that first like opening line mm. Um, I know a lot of people say not to put description in the first opening line, but that's what I did for mine. Um, cause mine literally starts in a heist. So I want you to like immediately know you're in the museum and something's about to happen. Um, mm -hmm. cause I know a lot of, like some people say like, that's a bad thing. I, I don't know that I've never, I've thought about like moving up dialogue. So we go into that, but I was just like, no, I like it as yeah. it is, which awesome. some editor might tell me no at some point, but, uh. But yeah, that's where it currently is. I yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like the first opening line wasn't something I I probably agonized over less than most people. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> but yeah, I was just curious. That was something that we had talked about recently. It was like how much pressure you put on that that little opening and and things like that. So now I just I have to ask everybody because I wonder. <laughs> and it's yeah. funny because it's like not until I was hanging out with other authors was like. I even like thinking about like how intense is like the first line or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like everybody makes such a big deal about it. I'm like, oh, maybe I should be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it makes one sense. of the things I didn't think about either. Like more of mine was like always just trying to like maybe it's like my my brain from like TV is like I I because I worked with the editors, I used to see like cuts go from like over an hour down to like the 42 minutes or whatever mm -hmm. they have to fit in TV because of commercials. Mm -hmm. That my brain was always just like just put in the information you need. Don't, and I wound up, of course, editing. I mean, mine was over like a hundred thousand words at one point and it's now at 93,000. Mm -hmm. wow. um, awesome. So I kind of like had to like put the brain of like, okay, if it wouldn't make the TV episode. Right. right. Got to cut out the shoe leather. It doesn't there, <laughs> you know? Wow. Um, smart. Which is not always easy, but like, that's kind of like how my brain works. Um, hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I'm sure there's somebody who's, who's going to be like, oh, you got to change your opening line or something. But um <laughs> But yeah, you have to be flexible on those things. I mean, there's certain things that I'm like, no, like if somebody was like, hey, we want to change it to a male lead. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> you know, there's certain things I'm not going to change, but there are <laughs> certain things I would be like, okay, well, I guess I can see your point. We need an, uh, a villain albino who whips himself. Uh, now you're like, no, whoever it is. <laughs> That's been done, been done to death. But um, hey, so you're talking about sending it out and obviously we're, we're talking about getting rejected how do you keep yourself motivated while still sending this out i usually try to so they they compare it to, well at least i compare it to i don't know if anybody else is that you're not supposed to send it to everybody and their brother so like i had freaking four pages worth of agents who said they were like vaguely interested in something that's in my book um at the very least um and i've been sending it to like 10 agents at a time um i kind of akin it to like you don't ask everybody out to prom at once because they're all going to talk to each other and they're going to yeah. know your bullshit if you're like right. ah you're my favorite right. <laughs> um so i've been doing 10 at a time though i kind of broke that rule recently um because it was like right after the holidays and i was told it was like a good time but uh but i usually wait for like that that batch and then a lot of them like say it like sometimes even up to 12 weeks that their reading time is so they usually have to wait three months and what I've been doing is like then revising the query if that batch doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So that usually kind of helps keep me motivated. It was like, okay, well, I changed this and maybe somebody will interact with that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that's usually the only way. But yeah, I mean, it is hard. Like I've gotten, according to Query Tracker, I've gotten like some 40 some odd rejections or whatever. Um, and some of those are like, you don't ever hear from agents. Like there's some, I think they call it, there's some like, another anagram that i'm shit at but basically saying like i didn't hear from this person and then yeah. you can update that on query tracker and basically being like it's past the 12 weeks i sent a nudge to them mm -hmm. they didn't respond so i'm going to close it so i can hopefully move to the next agent mm -hmm. um because yeah there's some of them like yeah it's been i mean i started querying in june there's some of them like i never heard back from and this is now seven months later <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. like you have to yeah. move on at some point but yeah, yeah there are, like, that's the thing i was just gonna say like just because like they haven't gotten to it doesn't mean they won't ever and like i like i don't know 
like I wouldn't give up hope in it, but yeah, go ahead and move on for sure. But like you always hear stories about like people that like their manuscript gets picked up like, you know, a year or two later. And it's just like this insane thing of like, oh yeah, I forgot this was in my like inbox. I read it, I liked it and I picked it up. And so it's like, that's why I'm such a big person on like go for no. Like, you know, if they're not going to respond, they'll respond eventually. <laughs> so they might not well, be yeah. happy about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went a little crazy. I, I can't remember if I mentioned it or just before we started recording that like I went on Twitter and like found people on Manuscript List list that I had already queried three plus months ago and they were like posting, they wanted something like mine. And I was like, hi, by the way, um, I queried you back in this month. <laughs> <laughs> um, I already gave this to you. <laughs> um and one lady to respond so we'll see if it, like nice. if she does anything with it but i mean yeah you can't i mean as long as you're not like a complete yeah ass like emailing right. yeah. them every day right. like sure. just be respectful like if their time says that we take up to 12 weeks right wait the 12 the weeks and then 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 be yeah. poking yeah. you can't like email you know every other day so <laughs> I think it's good too, because it shows that you have drive and that you're going to stay on top of things. Right. And I think sometimes people forget that when you find an agent, this is a person that you're going to be working with potentially for quite a while, right. Whether it's just for one book or, you know, a whole series or whatever. Uh, once you have that agent, you're, they're going to be working with you to get this book published and they're going to be kind of your middle person for everything. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to end up working with someone who doesn't like you or vice versa. Right. And so yeah. at least then, you know, like they can kind of see a little bit of your character and you can kind of see how they're going to respond to something like that. Yeah. And I feel like that's like a, a, a good platform to like kind of get insight on them beyond what they put on like their official pages, like check out their Twitter if they have it. I kind of really hate Twitter because it's just like a bunch of random stuff on there. <laughs> um, uh, it's just like a bunch of random nonsense. And I like, but it is like the place I will go, like I said, look for manuscript wish list and go just like hunt people that, you know, put in my keywords, like I'm on the manuscript wish list website kind of filters all of them. So I can put in there like Indiana Jones and hit search and see if anybody who's used that hashtag is the word, use the word Indiana Jones that said, Oh, I really love this movie. I'd like a book like it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Adding you to my list, you know? Mm -hmm um so but they'll also like you can see kind of like a little bit of their personalities on there you know a lot of them a answer questions a lot of them will say other things they like that maybe you connect with them on or something like that so it is a little because a lot of these conferences like i've been told like some people um get agents that way but like i, I literally actually looked for one that's called thriller fest it's in new york which I'm, mm -hmm. I'm originally from new york i've got family there so i was like okay cool i'll go see family i'll go do whatever I looked, it was like over $600 to go to this mm. pitch fest that's like 2 to 4 p.m. on oh, one wow. day. Two hours. And I was like, I'm going to pay $600. With to how like... many other people, right? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. and that's what they said. You have to stand in line behind whatever agent you want. Oh, my gosh. And oh. like, I assume they organize that in a way that you probably do get to some agents. But like, I was like, that's a lot of money yeah. <laughs> to like, yeah, and... hopefully your pitch is... They like your pitch in that three minutes you beat them. Yeah, exactly. And you get through what, maybe like four or five in two hours if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. It was something, yeah, it was like two to four, two to five or something. I remember it was like such a like thin time yeah. of window, which I was like, and like for six hundred dollars. And I mean there's <laughs> other things to do with that convention, but I was like, literally I'd be going for that. Like I'm not right. it's not like I'm on the panel there or something, right. have some other kind of stuff. So that yeah, I feel like yeah unfortunately okay. some of those that's that's a curious... supporting things are kind of a little expensive these days yeah mm -hmm. now i was going to ask about uh, if you if you've ever gone to writers conferences or conventions because there's sometimes i i know i hit a couple of them a year and there's always both agents and publishers there and they do set up like they schedule a time that's like i want to say it's like 10 minutes each it's it's a pretty good good amount of time and uh and it's scheduled, like you're at 8.15, you know what I mean? And the next one's at 8.30 or whatever. And so you get to sit. But have you ever done anything like that besides this one in New York you're thinking about? No. And this was really just because there was a, a lady who um, one of well, my author friends on Instagram sent me a podcast this lady was on that she was like, oh, yeah, I have a character that's like Indiana Jones. And, of course, she was like, ah, Michelle. Um, <laughs> so I went and listened to it. And she said that she got her agent through that, particularly that convention, Thriller Fest. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll check into it. And like I said, I had family there. So I was like, oh, I got a place to stay. Da, da, da. And then I was like, God, I'd have to pay more for the 
ticket to get in than probably the <laughs> plane to get in. <laughs> yeah. right? oh, man. So I'm 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 on the my, my holdup is I have that one agent who still has my pages and I was like I'm gonna be so pissed if I pay for this and then <laughs> tomorrow the next day or whatever yeah. she's like oh yeah I want it and I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, hey that is a small price to pay to get you know the world to be like hey irony you're already accepted yeah, so. oh, yeah. but there is actually uh, that same one the Eleanor Jones um, book series that she's working on she actually just sent me there's like a Twitter pitch fest which I'm like okay cool like I can do it from my bedroom I don't yeah. have to pay to Leap. Yes. <laughs> like, like I can just tweet my little, you know, elevator yeah. pitch with a hashtag, and hopefully, maybe somebody will see me. Um, so those I think are more what I'm looking for now, just because. Yeah. yeah, I just, you know, I mean, luckily I'm an, an adult that like had a job. Unfortunately, right. I'm unemployed right now, but I, you know, uh -huh. a lot of people are struggling right now and probably can't afford to fly to New York, pay for a hotel, right. and pay for, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and they might have a great piece of work, but don't mm -hmm. have the means so yeah. I, that that's the struggle i think yeah good point. a lot of people are going through good point just but for our listeners yeah i mean if you do have some uh, cash if, if there's a big tree that's handing out uh, dollar bills in the back <laughs> then there are writer <laughs> conferences and conventions you can go research because they that is another and that they will actually give you feedback right there too um because mm -hmm. that's i sat there um and i this was pitch. I was pitching um, non-fiction uh, books, and uh, they're you know what? That's uh, that's kind of interesting. What else do you have? You know, <laughs> like okay, uh, <laughs> let me go down my little list of other books. I guess we could talk about. And then I remember one of them. Like I had two that I really wanted. And they're like, no, 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 no. Everyone say no. And then one guy was like, well, what else you got? Uh, there's this other one. Oh my gosh, that's what we need. Like that. And I'm like, really? That's cool because that's not really the book I want to write at all. So uh, <laughs> I was not at all interested. In, I don't know why I wrote that idea, but he liked that one. But uh, no, we never worked together because I was like, no, thanks. That's not, I just I'm just trying to think like, do I really want to write a book about this? Not really. But um, but anyway, it's that's a great way, though, to get instant feedback because we're talking about how unfortunate it is. Yeah, like these these it's not just the agents. I want to say that it's probably their assistants too, that they have working mm -hmm. with them. Like they just look at something and like, Nope, that didn't, you know, that doesn't sound good. And, yeah. um, it's very unfortunate, but that's just the, that's just the way it works right now because there are literally hundreds. And like I said, thousands that are coming across our desk every week and they, they just don't have the time to, you know, to be, Oh, let's read Bob's and then let me send him a, you know, a 10 minute, you know, uh, you know, rejection letter. It's just, no, it's just like a boom, just put a stamp on it mm -hmm. next, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Which to your point is why, you know, conventions can be really good because you're actually getting, you know, to see the people for face to face. Mm -hmm. And even if it's like a no, it's like, oh, hey, I've met you. And so if I do send you a query letter later, because I'm like, oh, hey, we talked before. You said you were into this. I had something that was like kind of percolating in the back of my mind. Here's this thing. I think you'd really like it because of X, Y, Z. And it's like you have a little bit of a rapport because you like actually got to talk to them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. But, you know, $600 is a lot of money to pay to have <laughs> rapport with like four people. But it's some yeah. experience if you can afford it. Exactly. You know, if, like I said, you got a money tree or grandma's got some, uh, you know, rare coin somewhere you can grab. But, uh, you know, try it. Just go yeah. look for it. Yeah, the other suggestion I've I've been told, um, which is I find it always difficult the suggestion, but I've heard people like, oh, I go for like new agents. The agent that actually requested my pages, she had only been open mm -hmm. for like one day her queries. Okay. And I got lucky that like literally one of my my friends in my author's group it was like, Hey, I saw her post that she liked Indiana Jones. Uh, you should query her and she opens like next week or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why I've been told it's like a lot of like, you know, obviously yeah. like Look for George R. R. Martin and Dan Brown's agent probably don't need people. Like, you no. know, like they're not looking for. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, exactly. even if you're going to query them, you can. Like, that's a but good point. The likelihood of not. So, like, if you can find somebody who's like, hey, I'm newish to this, or maybe they're an assistant, or like they're just getting mm -hmm. in the door. Like, because, like I said, my lady, I like, let's say theoretically, she query, opened her query on Monday. I queried on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I still had to wait a month for her to huh. read my submission and ask for more pages. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like I said, it's been three months since, but like Lily, she tweeted, she had closed her queries, which they can basically like say, like, we're not taking any new, new query letters right now uh, for a month. Cause she had gotten 1100 in the three months she had been wow. open. 1100 in three months. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. So 
you yeah. know again right. <laughs> like at least i'm not the only one waiting but yeah. yeah that's like a little bit of trick that was like i've heard it was like if you can find somebody who's like interested in your genre who's like at least a newer agent mm -hmm. they're probably going to be more likely to respond to you because they don't have the sure. client list a agent of yeah some notable author has yeah, yeah. and two Good it's point. like they'll have more openings because like yeah maybe somebody that's a little bit older will have like a opening but they're not going to have like time in their schedule to do like oh we're you know we're looking for 10 new authors or something so. yeah yeah okay for sure well, good no thank you um now i have to ask one last question michelle um mm. you worked in tv so mm -hmm. you don't have any contacts i mean this is what i would i'm sure you probably get that too like uh you know like don't you have people in the know because it's usually like it's not what you know is who you know um in the business or any business really well like publishing and tv are like two different brains yeah. I mean I mm -hmm. have I have I mean it's funny because like even like between tv and film what you think would be closer mm. you 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 pick a street a side of the street like mm -hmm. I was like pretty much almost always in tv mm -hmm. I like worked on like a couple like reshoots of random movies and that was it I never worked on like a full-scale movie mm -hmm. um but yeah, I've, I, even today, I actually know a lady who she's like written for like the Star Wars books. And I was like, does your agent like anything I write? And she's like, he doesn't do action adventure. And I was like, yeah. oh, shoot. Um, and I've even had like referrals. There was actually one lady I, I met through a, a networking group called Lunch Club. And she used to be an agent, but she was a romance agent. So she's like, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. um, but she sent it to somebody else and they gave me some like referrals and like, oh. Half of them said no, and then half of them never answered. So, like, even <laughs> if you get a referral, sometimes you're mm -hmm. like, no, why no? Um, oh, well. But, yeah, as far as TV, like, the only other person I know that, like, had a book, like, she wrote, like, a fangirl book, which is not my... Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing about, like, agents. Like, people think, like, you can just go to any agent. Like, usually they, they specialize. They'll be like, I am a children's author right. agent, or I only do thrillers, or I only do romance or i only do you know uh yeah. picture books whatever you know right. so like that's why she was like oh my agent like she does kid lit and like mm -hmm. stuff like that <laughs> like, like mine's not kid lit so they can't help me right <laughs> so it's, yeah no but yeah i mean i've had people who are like why don't you just make it a script and i'm like you understand how hard it is to like make <laughs> God, no, thanks. tv or movies <laughs> like i had a friend who the one that actually inspired me to write because she she joked i should try she had a TV show that was up at a network, got in, like, was working on it for, like, a couple years. They paid her to do all the revisions, whatever. I mean, she was, like, far down the road with this project. And then they had a change in the guard there, which was basically, like, all the executives got let go and they, like, put in new blood. And anytime that happens, the new regime doesn't yeah. want to carry over what the old regime had. Mm. So her show got pushed off. Wow. Be just like that because of something that she didn't do like it no, wasn't her yeah. fault you know right. like and, oh, it's gotta be heartbreaking you know unless you are already you know established like or have mm -hmm. you know a big name like behind it it's really hard i mean there was a docuseries i tried to get made during you know like towards the end of covid and i got in rooms i got the first room i got in was like what room it was during covid i wasn't in the room with them but i was <laughs> um dwayne johnson's production company okay and they were like, oh, that sounds cool, but we got stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, uh, thanks. You know? um, but the amount of people that are like, oh, well, if you, you know, knew somebody famous to get on this docuseries, or if you had this, or you had that, you know, mm -hmm. it's always the, yeah. so you know, you know <laughs> yeah. who you know, or however you stitch it together, or, yeah. you know. Yeah. And like, too, it's such an interesting dynamic to being trying, like, trying to be a writer. It's like, you have to be introverted enough to spend enough time alone to do the work of doing it but then you also have to be extroverted enough to go out and make all the connections and have all that working for you and it's just like it seems like the odds are against everybody and i'm just not sure how we all make it work yeah and i'm pretty sure they save all that energy for like comic-con because every time i've gone to comic-con i will like literally go to the certain bars where i know writers hang out Ooh, mm -hmm. um because you go find the eps that actually like make the good joke yeah because you're like this is mm -hmm. i'm gonna get drinks at comic-con yeah that's um, funny. but uh but yeah no it, it's a it, writers are like very interesting people i mean there was one show i worked on i used we were across the hall and i used to be like hi and people like ignore you and then 
I was on another <laughs> show and I'd be like, hi. And they're like, hey, how are you doing? How was your weekend? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very so wacky. Yeah. It's very wacky. Yeah. I mean, I had one writer, he was an EP um, on a bunch of like sci-fi shows. He was an EP on, um, when I met him, it was Marvel's Agent Carter. He was on Vampire Diaries. He was on some Steven Spielberg TV show. Hmm. He worked with James Cameron. Like he worked with everybody and he read mine Mm -hmm. as a favor to me because we're friends. And he's like one of those people that's like, sometimes I won't see him for like two years. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I'll see you on your birthday. See you yeah. next week, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, but yeah, uh, the whole like writer's strike and all the other strikes oh are kind of making mm-hmm. life difficult as it is right now. Oh, so yeah. I think making anything is going to be a, yeah. a struggle bus. Yeah. This is so exciting. Thanks, Michelle, for uh, for joining us. Um, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, you just had so many. I Now, next time, I'll we'll have you on, and we'll just talk about all your stories that you have with working in the TV industry. So <laughs> sure. we'll, just, we'll do a 2V TV industry uh, episode. But before we leave, we like to do our don't segment. Don't do this. Actually, I was going to say, oh. I totally, I totally oh. forgot. Oh, hi, Holly. Unless, <laughs> unless this happened, unless this happened and I totally missed it. Um, how can we find you? Oh my god! Well, no, we're not. Yeah, yeah. We oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, we're not. We're not ending the show yet. We're not ending the show yet. But yes, how can we find you, Michelle? Usually, yeah. we ask that first, but we got a little excited today. We, you're That's right. Okay. No, she's absolutely. Yeah, it was right. all That's tangents okay. today. Um, on Instagram and on TikTok, on Michelle writes a novel. Um, the only one that, and I think that's threads as well the only one that's not because twitter has a handle character limit is michelle writes uh on twitter slash x <laughs> uh, slash a, like a not U-H. yeah michelle writes a <laughs> a as in the, the first letter in the alphabet yeah um, uh yeah they had like a, a character limit and i was like oh well i guess this is what Shoot. i live with now <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect yeah how can we find perfect okay uh, so our don't segment, don't do that segment when querying. What, anybody have anything? I, I, the one that's coming to the top of my head, like I said, like is the the one that I said earlier about like don't query everybody and tell them you love them because they all talk to each other. <laughs> like, don't tell you know. them you love them. What? Well, well like, like <laughs> oh, I'm you're my favorite. People, like, you're my oh favorite. yeah, you're my favorite. I got and it, then yeah. like, if I say that to you and I say that to ten guys behind you, yeah. they all talk to each other. Right, so, right, 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 um, yeah. But um, but yeah. Okay. As far as don'ts, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it's really like a don't, but like, yeah. Just try to like have patience and like know it's not you. So like, I guess don't take it personally. There's True. my don't. Is like, yeah. You kind of mm-hmm. have to like just be like, all right. Well, this is the process. <laughs> right. Yeah, because we're talking about what's marketable. They're they're you know they're trying to find something that's going to make a million dollars, just like everyone else. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's almost like not, not their fault either. Like, hey, I mean, we hey, vampires were in just a little while ago, and uh, you know now it's something else. But you know, yeah. So it's 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 a roll of the dice all the time. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's, and that's a good something one. that I I I mean I I feel like I probably complain about this to like a lot of people uh, on, <laughs> online, so they might see this. But like, <laughs> YA romance is like what's selling right now, and I'm like not YA and I'm not romance, and like. Yeah unfortunately that's yeah what is hot right now you know yeah. you even look on tiktok like dark romance is this whole even thing beyond <laughs> ya romance and like i'm like i'm not that either so yeah. like yeah. It, if, if you are not that like I, f- I feel like yeah definitely don't like the <laughs> don't take it personally because yeah. like mm-hmm. just because your genre isn't in fashion right now yeah um Steampunk, i will right. i will say romance is always the hot thing yeah so that's well yeah yeah I mean, <laughs> you can look back in the 90s with all the you know fabio looking dudes in the front oh, of the yeah. covers hey yeah. that's yeah. actually me i don't know how they got those pictures of me in <laughs> somebody's a good painter man i'm not gonna complain <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> what do you got awesome. I, I was just gonna say so like coming off of the like don't take it personally but like also like don't pass up the like opportunity to like celebrate rejection because like you don't need to be with anybody that doesn't want to be with you whether that's an editor or an agent or you know a significant other like you want to be with the people that want to be with you and they want to work with you and they want to make something awesome with you and so like if that's not you know the first 
10 people that you send it to. It's not the first 100 people you send it to. Like, you don't need 100 agents. You need one. So, you, you, you know, if it takes a thousand no's to get to that yes, that's all that matters. So celebrate every no along the way to that one yes, because that's all you need. And it's out there. You just got to keep looking. Yeah. Yeah. And to add to that, like, I feel like, because sometimes I'll get discouraged because mine's action adventure. And like I said, it's like not a very popular genre right now. And I don't write romance. And that's not as popular as these, you know, enemies to lovers and all these different tropes and stuff like that. But then I'll like get like a random message from somebody who's like, oh, I would have, you know, loved reading your book when I was 20 or whatever like that. Seeing, you know, mm -hmm. a female who doesn't have, you know, has these things going for her, but like it isn't about romance or yeah. You know, um, there's a lady on TikTok recently. She's been like, I'm so sick of romance. All I want is a thriller. You know, if she's like, so like, e even if your community is small, they're probably out there somewhere, you mm -hmm. know, like I know yeah. there's definitely like, I've been to a shop in Los Angeles. That's all about, was all about steampunk. Like, I know there's an audience out mm -hmm. there. It might not be as big as Twilight was, but yeah. like, <laughs> there's going to be your people somewhere in some yeah. little corner of the world. Mm hmm yeah, and there's nothing wrong with being like that mid-level author who just, you know, makes a decent living. Like, we don't have to be, you know, you know, JK rich. Like, we can just be, you know, mm -hmm. getting our <laughs> mortgage paid, and that would be fantastic. Yeah. And so, like, if, you know, your niche is cyberpunk, or if you're me and your pitch is grimdark Pokemon, like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, grimdark Pokemon. It's going to be my go-to fake pitch for forever, because yeah. it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else. I was like, like, yeah, I was like, Pokemon is like hella popular. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And Grim Dark's hella popular. What's wrong with it? <laughs> the perfect combo. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, I guess my turn. Um, I know we kind of touched on this, but don't forget to do your research. Um, so you don't want to be sending your work out to people that aren't, you know, they're just gonna reject it right away. They're not even gonna receive it. Um, and it's almost disrespectful to agents to just mm -hmm. send your work to anybody because it's wasting your time. It's wasting their time, especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't want to be sending your dark romance to a kid literary <laughs> agent. Like, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. And if you're not going through and reading the fine print, um, you need to do your research so you know who you're sending that query letter to so you can customize it to that agent. You know, don't just send the same thing to 50 people because they're they're going to be able to see right through that, right? They're going to know it's not, you're not taking the time to even customize mm -hmm. this for them. Then why would they take the time to do all this hard work for you to find you a publisher? Yeah, mm, that's um, good. Yeah, it's just yeah. like Michelle said about it being like a cover letter when you're applying for mm -hmm. your job. Like if you're not customizing it to that employer, they can see it in two seconds and go, oh, yeah. okay, whatever. They don't even care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was perfect. Yeah, to that point, like, they, yeah, they're like the kid lit versus the dark one. Like, they're, they're not going to want you anyway, so you're just wasting their time and your time. So, yeah. like, it's just, you know, and I, and I, I've had it, you know, like where they're, they're like maybe they really like the fan fa found a family trope, but they don't say they like thriller. I might try try that, but at least I'm like still connecting them to something in my book and not just completely, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just, just make sure like you have something aligned to whatever they're asking yeah. for. Exactly. Um, I guess I will go with uh, don't beat yourself up um, when you when you do get rejected. It's I can't think of a single I, maybe it has happened where somebody submitted their 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 book and it got accepted right away. Um, maybe, but. Maybe. Um, will usually get rejected and rejected so don't beat yourself up don't don't second guess yourself also like when don't take it back after a five or six and go okay maybe i need to change something because i listen to what everyone's saying here like you'll you're going to find your audience and you're going to find the right agent at the right time you just have you please believe in your work and um as long as you've had beta readers and you know you've kind of gone through the whole system as it were to to make sure it's nice and polished and ready to, ready to be submitted but yeah so don't don't beat yourself up because uh it's gonna happen like i knew my book was gonna get rejected i did not i was not butthurt about it i expected it <laughs> I, will, I will almost just say just expect to be rejected okay and just but just you gotta just keep going you know uh because they're out there everyone was to think of whoever is your favorite uh author is they've been rejected tens tens mm -hmm. and tens of times so 
Keep yeah, there's a, a famous story, even I think it was like Stephen King, like he, Carrie got rejected a bunch and then he actually even threw Carrie away. Yeah. Legit, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. was like, this is right. gone. And then somehow his brought wife, it back. His wife and then pulled his it back wife. out of the trash can. Yeah, yeah there mm-hmm. we go. I, I can't remember what it was, but like, yeah. and look now that what they've made at least two movies of it. Yeah. Riverdale had a freaking musical episode of Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> they've had God knows with how many versions of that thing yeah. done, and people love yeah. it. Yeah. You yeah. know, and like, like and- and that's that same, King. Yeah. Yeah, to that same point like brandon sanderson like whenever i talked earlier about like you know sometimes they do come back a lot later like his first book that he sold was like on the agent's desk for two years or something like that and then the finally we're like oh hey look i've got this book here i like it let me contact him <laughs> so like out of the blue he had already written a whole other book that he was trying to, oh my microphone just fell that he was trying to query <laughs> and then like you know, too it all came there. through yeah apparently <laughs> 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 Okay, well, that's all for today. One more time, Michelle, where can we find you? Uh, Michelle writes a novel on TikTok, Instagram, and on threads. And then Michelle writes A as in the, the A in the alphabet yeah. on um, X slash twi- Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Okay, <laughs> and, then, and then if you're on YouTube, we'll have those links down below. All right, well, thank you, Michelle, very much. It was so informative. It was great having you. It was uh, amazing. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, so don't forget to write and describe to our channels at the link below so you, can, so you don't miss any of the Writer's Realm content. We always love to hear from our listeners. So if you have a question or topic you want us to dive into, get in touch. And also, if you're really more interested in um, querying, you can always, <laughs> I guess I'm speaking for you, Michelle. <laughs> if the people have questions, <laughs> they can, you know, ask you. But, if, but you can always ask in the comments too, uh, you know, and hopefully we'll keep, we can go to, get a hold of Michelle. But yeah, I'm sure she's available to answer it. I can, so. I can do my best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we love to hear maybe even your experiences about querying and, uh, you know, the joys and uh, the agony and defeat, as it were, if you'd like to share. So, but anyway, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.